The wonderful thing about terpenes is terpenes are wonderful things. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's they smell really Isn't that like Tigger? That, that's like yeah, Tigger yeah. terpenes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's kind of generational. Did you ever watch the, like, the... Tigger? Yeah, Tigger. As in poo? As in poo, yeah. Of course. Yeah, Tigger, Tigger. Wonderful yeah. thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. Are... Tops are made of the rubber, the bottoms are made of the springs. Ah, uh, yes. Tr- bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, flouncy. Terpenes are wonderful things. I mean, a lot of people really like it because uh, it's the flavor. It's the yeah. flavor profile of the yeah. plant. I mean, it's what you want to really... And there's lots of uh, benefits. We've done tremendous amount of podcasts on this before. And now uh, there's a lot of people that are like, hey, where, where are the terpenes? Where have all the terpenes gone? This is kind of like, uh, where have they all gone? Well, we know that in ethanol extraction... One of the issues there is that the terpenes kind of go away, right? Mm-hmm. So you pretty much need to have natural terpenes, quote unquote, natural terpenes that you buy from a bottle or a store. And so where do, you, do, they, do they actually get them out of a plant? No, they're probably concoction. When you say they go away, what do you, uh, what do you mean? We were talking about this earlier. I mean, we have that, uh, we have the ethanol, right? Mm-hmm. And so you, you do your ethanol extraction, all the terpenes come out into the ethanol. Mm-hmm. And then after you get your ethanol extraction, you remove your ethanol mm-hmm. from your extract. Well, some of the terpenes, especially the volatile ones, will end up co-distilling with the ethanol. Ah. So they get they get contaminated in the ethanol. Okay. And then in addition to that, after that, then you typically would try to upgrade the potency afterward, right? Right, you, right, right. you do that with... With your boiling off distillation, yeah? Yeah, you'd have to d- distill it. In order to do that, you'd have to do a decarboxylation step. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're basically cooking the bejesus out of the... Out of the extract, it uh, turns completely black, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if you've seen that. It smells course, terrible. Yeah. And then that's your extract, and then you put it into the, you know, you put that into the molecular still, mm-hmm. and then what do you got? Then you got nice distillate, right? Mm-hmm. But where are your terpenes gone? They're all gone. Gonzo. They're gonzo. Yeah. yeah. I mean, terpenes are units of five each, right? So there's like, I don't know. You can get into, whose phone is that? Oh, that's Tim. Sorry. Uh, they're probably, he's probably wondering, where's my stuff? So anyway, where were we? Larger terpenes, yeah. sets of five. Yeah, sets of five. So terpenes are isoprene units, and they, they're all kind of like step one. So monoterpenes are like yep. a two isoprene units, three isoprene units, four isoprene units, and they, they're they building blocks. And then they end up cyclizing on each other and kind mm-hmm. of go like steroids, for example, are or they're, those are like terpenes or high-level terpenes, for example. Steroids? Yeah, yeah. They're, okay. Yeah, so our plant steroids, yeah. sterols yeah, okay, and things okay, like okay. that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so there we are. They were all set. Uh, so that's why I mean, where have all the terpenes gone? Well, because of that phenomenon, we have spent a lot of time trying to replace those terpenes mm-hmm. because a lot of the distillates coming from ethanol, right? Mm-hmm. And because we lose it as part of the process, then we have to replace it with like non-natural ones or synthetic ones or with less of a full spectrum mm-hmm. of, yeah. So that's the other thing about full spectrum oils. I mean, that come from more natural, say, ethanol extracts i mean if if they are if they go through a distillation process that's obviously not not really not full accurate, spectrum yeah. right so quote unquote if, if an extract extracted with ethanol is quote unquote full spectrum that's not entirely accurate yeah i think so yeah, yeah. what is full spectrum yeah what is full spectrum fair enough i mean i don't know uh, full spectrum we've we've covered this a little bit but a complete representative of the right the which there's no such thing Right. Right. So it's more like a marketing term. As much term. as possible, yeah. Right. I think that there's no compendial or scientific definition of full spectrum. Yeah, I think you're you right. You know, like, okay, oh, we want full spectrum. Well, what is that? You define it, right? right. Or give me, give me a specification. They can't do it. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, the, it's the, everything that looks like the plant. Well, okay, what is that? Like thousands of compounds? You tell me. So, so we invented a, another... Marketing. Fuzzy term. Yeah. Broad. Right. Broad, broad term spectrum. that's not specified. So you can have full or fuller. Fuller spectrum. <laughs> fuller spectrum. Yeah. I want the fuller spectrum. Well, yeah, my, yeah. my spectrum is fuller than your spectrum. Exactly. <laughs> and then it's just a, I think that's the whole deal with the live resin, live, the live resin side mm-hmm. of it. It's like our spectrum is fuller than your spectrum. Yeah. It, it is a part of the process. So they fresh freeze it and then they, then they would extract it. But still you have to try to preserve the monoterpenes, right? Yep. And, and have those more of the, more of the volatiles involved in that. And it's the monoterpenes that are of uh, the, the most volatile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. And a lot of people say that that's a part of the flavor. Now, there's been some research that says, hey, well, obviously, flavor people, they know that the, the flavanols or the other 
the other compounds in there also have a huge impact on the taste and maybe even more so than say the terpenes do. Yeah. We know that aroma has a huge impact on the flavor, maybe 50% worth of flavor, for example, maybe aroma, depending on if you're talking about the aroma people or ask the aroma people if it's important, they'll say, it. <laughs> they'll say, yes, it's important. So I wait. mean, it truly is right. So, but so wait, so terpenes, um, flavonoids. Well, okay. So I was just going to ask that terpenes are, I guess, bring the flavor and aroma to yeah. botanicals. The flavonoids, what are, what is, what exactly does that mean? We differentiate. Well, the flavonoids are, I think they're a, they're a class, they're a class of compounds that, okay. that are made by plants or that are made and they're, they're basically different. they are different classes of flavonoids uh-huh. and you can separate those out and they're the main contributors to taste. So they are not terpenes. They are not terpenes. Which okay. is pretty cool, right? Yeah. So you got you got flavanol, uh, then you also have you also have terpenes, which are aroma. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure I don't know. Have you ever tasted like terpenes? They don't taste good. I guess I haven't tasted. They're no. really super bitter. Right. You know what I mean, well, they're very potent. Yes. Yeah. When you, I guess, yeah, I guess you have to cut them with some agent or yeah. something like that, right? To, to but if, we, if you taste them and put them on your tongue, some people are also allergic to terpenes, right? So, okay, didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's a one thing that like for example, there's been reports in the literature now of mouth sores and things like that taking place with full spectrum oils, As whatever a result the, of whatever terpenes. is full spectrum. Well, or or perhaps residual solvents, or maybe it's heptane, <laughs> or maybe it's heptane in there, or something like that. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, I'm getting all these mouth sores. It must be from the terpenes. No, maybe it, maybe it's just because you're sucking down chemicals every day. Nothing to do with denatured no. ethanol. No, it can't have it can't have anything to do with heptane. Perfectly fine. I drink oh. it every morning. I haven't had to have Dane since breakfast. Yeah. Under uh, under 5,000 parts per million. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Under 5,000 parts per million, it's okay. And the reason we know it's okay <laughs> is because we don't have the data yeah. that says yeah. it's okay. That's the reason we know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. That's, that's all right. Now, I, I hope that the, the chemical companies are, oh, they, oh, they kicked the brown paper bag underneath the table towards me. <laughs> like, I pick it up here. I think, that's, I think that's fast. When most people talk about flavor and aroma, especially in, in cannabis, they, at least from my perspective, they're mainly only talking about terpenes. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. That's right. I think that's a, yeah, I, maybe that's a little bit of common, a... Common, common misconception, maybe? Yeah, maybe just they haven't emphasized it. Yeah. I mean, in the flavor world, the, there's there's obviously aroma is really important. Yeah. You can't have off aromas, but flavonoids are the king. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the same. It's the same. I mean, you have that. So you hear about terpene, whether it's cannabis derived terpenes or naturally derived terpenes or synthetic terpenes added to product for taste. I think it's in, like, it, are there flavonoids? Like you can't separate flavonoids. Can you? We're going to do an entire program on this. I think, hey, James, oh, can you, can you make a note on that? Well, let's just keep it going. But, yeah, we're going to, because I, we, we should probably go over all the details on that. Because I don't actually have it in my head. I, uh, I, I mean, I, I know about the classes of molecules, but right. it'd be great. I'd be super awesome if I could, like, rattle off, like, ten of them for you. Can, can <laughs> flavonoids be but separated? Yeah. Yeah, okay. they can. Aside from terpenes. Yeah, aside from terpenes. Yeah. So you, you I've could, never heard anyone talk about, at yeah. least in cannabis, because that's part of the appeal of cannabis and different strains. Mm-hmm. There's a different profile for, for all of them wouldn't that be cool to have like a flavonoid profile cannabis for every flavonoid. cannabis yeah that'd be rad that'd be cool fortified or james we're gonna we're gonna totally do that we're gonna put that on the list for ben dr Flav- ben nice. dr ben yes we got to get him yeah going. we got to get him going on yeah, yeah, yeah. got to get him going on doing some separations there that's the power of chromatography i mean if you suppose you are interested in understanding about what you can do with the plant a lot of people just want to say okay i'm gonna exploit what's right in front of me i'm yeah. gonna get it done make money who cares if there's heptane or just sell it off to the people who cares if i destroy the environment while i'm doing it no big deal i'm yeah. making money yeah. ka-ching and leave go big or go home i mean that's are the, are the margins good though are the margins the margins are good <laughs> they're the margins are good but who cares about the other stuff? Okay. <laughs> uh, who cares if we're cutting the cutting the agents with the fentanyl? Oh uh, yeah, uh, operating costs. <laughs> operating costs, no problem. No don't worries. worry about that. Don't, don't worry about worry. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to do the math. We don't have to do the math because we're just going to charge triple, quadruple. Yeah. But if there's there's the other class of of operators that are really putting time and effort in, into understanding what the next products are, mm-hmm. doing the research, and, it, and it's more than academics that are doing it. It's it's actual in the industry that's doing it. Totally, and, yeah. Yeah, so I think they're coming up with stuff, 
put a new co- a cool marketing label on it and kazam they yeah. got a good product i mean that's what live resin is i mean it's yeah. they did a good job with if you look at the uh, keywords and the, just like a year ago is when th- those keywords really started to take off you yeah know, so so you think it's mainly a result of marketing spin. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah that, it wouldn't surprise me i don't i don't personally you know know from experience i wish we had uh you know i know that there's a lot of companies in the industry that take these types of data where they're actually you know they're measuring the number of people who are buying this cartridge or that cartridge or whatever Mm -hmm. i still predict that probably the number one category like gummies and edibles and sodas and stuff like that and then on the vape side is probably you know a huge bunch of people who are buying the nine dollars and 99 cent vape cartridge and then there's very small number of people buying like rot live rosin pens for 60 70 bucks i i don't i still think it's a connoisseur market you know but i don't know i there are people who have this data i'm just I'm just guessing that, you know, take these niche, very niche products that get a lot of jazz, get a lot of uh, hype, get a lot of spin, get a lot of Scooby-Doo, you know? That, that data would be uh, dependent on accurate reporting. Yeah, right, right. No, I know. Like, for example, <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. I think that in itself is a, an, an issue. Perhaps. But I, the, honestly, the keyword, well, I think that the, keyword searching is, I, I would probably... Obviously not sales and revenues uh, data, but keyword searching really gives us an idea what people are looking are searching for. for. Yeah, right. That's it. Yeah, I think data you'd be able to see trends over time too. You know what I mean? And the yeah. data from dispensaries, yeah. those are, you can kind of correlate them and yeah. see. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us for this conversation. Uh, this has been uh, Dr. John and Connor um, for Extract Talks. Join us next time. We're going to be talking about flavonoids uh, and all things related to flavonoids. Uh, We're going to be talking about more terpene talk. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Take care. See you later.